Aviation history was made recently when the Bell Boeing tilt rotor team rolled out the first B-22 Osprey tilt rotor aircraft. Here are some scenes from that exciting occasion. While there was a special reception for honored guests the previous night, events officially started at 7 a.m. on the 23rd with rather sleepy people meeting in the terrace room of the Worthington Hotel for coffee and Danish. Sleepiness was, however, only a temporary state, and by 7.30, everyone was awake and on their way to the Grand Ballroom for breakfast, hosted by Boeing Helicopters Don Chestnut and Bell Helicopter Textron's President Jack Horner. Among the perhaps 1,500 people gathered here were not only dedicated employees from Bell and Boeing, but representatives from suppliers located across 44 states and four other countries. They were greeted with general applause and honored by a special video program which identified their companies by name and pinpointed their location. The gathering also included distinguished guests from government and the military. Ray Christman, the Secretary of Commerce of Pennsylvania, spoke on the value of the V-22 program to the state as well as the nation and delivered greetings and best wishes from Governor Casey. Dr. F. Blake Wallace, general manager of Allison, the engine division of General Motors, was introduced as the man ultimately responsible for powering the V-22 into the air. And in keeping with a happy occasion, Bob Bolin, mayor of Fort Worth, and Richard Green, mayor of Arlington, Texas, exchanged gifts with Ted Erickson, chairman, Delaware County Council, and Nick Catania, vice chairman, Delaware County Council. It was all very pleasant, and the food was good. But of course, breakfast wasn't what the gathering was about. Shortly thereafter, everyone left by bus for Bell Helicopter Textron's Plant 6, Building 8, where the only V-22 tilt rotor aircraft in the world awaited them behind a hangar-sized blue curtain. As final preparations were being made, the experts had an opportunity to answer questions for the press in front of a battery of cameras. But down in the hangar, hundreds of chairs awaited guests, and as it turned out, there weren't enough. So great was the interest in the tilt rotor that perhaps a fourth of the audience stood throughout its introduction. Music was provided by the United States Marine Corps Band. And the program was moderated by Bell's Mr. Clyde Skeen, who told exactly how he felt about the occasion. Because of the inexorable march of Father Time, this event will clearly be my last. All I can say is, what a great way to go. Among the speakers were Mr. B. F. Dolan. Mr. Frank Schrantz, General Alfred M. Gray, Jr., Secretary of the Navy, William L. Ball, and featured speaker, Speaker of the House of Representatives, the Honorable James Wright. General Blatt and Mr. Sloan and Mr. Ellis, will you please come to the podium? Well, ladies and gentlemen, 
like any good program manager, I managed to get myself in a position where I have the last word to say. Of course, I've only managed to do that after I've gotten the clearance, permission, and guidance of most everybody in the first three rows. What I'd like to say now is, for the government and the Bell, Bo Bell Boeing Joint Program Office, represented on the Boeing side by Chuck Ellis, on the Bell side by Clive Sloan, would like to ask you to accompany us as we follow the B-22 as it's rolled out onto the ramp to get the latest look and greatest look at the best we have of American aerospace technology. The sight of the B-22 was received almost with awe. As one, the audience rose and gave the team and the product a solemn standing ovation. They knew what a monumental effort it represented. They know what monumental efforts remain. But they also know that tilt rotors are here. That they're big and powerful. And that we're on our way tomorrow. begins to take shape in the early 1930s. One aircraft is able to fly like an airplane. Then the non-powered upper wing rotates for a vertical landing. In 1937, a heliplane is patented but never built, a craft remarkably similar to later tilt-rotor designs. At the end of World War II, many forward thinkers begin developing converter plane designs and building prototypes. In 1950, the U.S. Air Force announces a competition to design a true working converter plane. The McDonnell Company builds a compound helicopter known as the XV-1, based on a pressure jet plus a tip-burning rotor. But Bell Aircraft decides on a different approach, guided by the leadership of its chief engineer for the project, Rob.
the same period, Boeing develops a testbed vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. The Boeing VZ-2 is a tilt-wing aircraft that helps prove the VTOL concept. On July 15, 1958, the VZ-2 successfully converts from helicopter to airplane flight. In seven years of testing, it achieves more than 200 successful conversions between helicopter and airplane modes. At the conclusion of government funding for the XV-3 program in 1966, two companies continued to pursue the dream of tilt rotor technology, Bell and Boeing. During the late 1960s and early 1970s, Boeing conducts more than 3,500 hours of testing of tilt rotor models, including hundreds of hours of wind tunnel tests. During the same period, Bell undertakes intensive efforts for a new tilt rotor design. In 1972, NASA and the Army's Air Mobility Research and Development Laboratory award both Bell and Boeing contracts to begin new tilt rotor designs. A year later, Textron's Bell helicopter is chosen to design, fabricate, and test a totally new tilt rotor research aircraft, the XV-15. Utilizing modern turbine engines and advanced designs, the first of two XV-15s makes its first hover flight in 1977. Following extensive wind tunnel tests of ship number one, the aircraft is flown and achieves full conversion to airplane mode in 1979. Over the next nine years, two XV-15s test, prove, and display the reality of tilt rotor technology by making more than 1,800 conversions, flying to 26,000 feet, and reaching a true airspeed of more than 300 knots in level flight, more than twice the cruising speed of a conventional helicopter. Near the end of the XV-15 program, Boeing designs and manufactures advanced composite rotor blades for improved useful mode and hover lift performance. By the early 1980s, the stage is set for the world's first operational tilt rotor aircraft. A December 1981 document publishes the requirements for the Joint Services Advanced Vertical Lift Aircraft, or JVX, program. The challenge is formidable. Compared to existing helicopters, the JVX tilt rotor will be called upon to carry an equal payload at twice the speed over twice the distance, all at a lower cost. The two leaders in the field, Bell and Boeing, combine their expertise to participate in the Joint Services Program competition. It proves to be a winning combination. Bell's 30 years experience in tilt rotor design and drive systems, Boeing's leadership in wing and fuselage design, fly-by-wire flight control, and advanced composite materials. Plus the success of Allison with its turboshaft engines for the military. On April 25, 1983, the Naval Air Systems Command awards the Bell Boeing team the contract for the preliminary design of the JVX tilt rotor. Nearly 10,000 hours of wind tunnel testing are carried out, more than for any rotary wing program in history. The official name of the JVX aircraft is announced, the V-22 Osprey. In May 1986, the Navy awards a seven-year full-scale development contract to produce six flight test V-22s. Fabrication of the first flight test aircraft progresses. Nearly all wing and fuselage structural elements are fabricated from graphite epoxy composite laminates. The first V-22 fuselage produced by Boeing helicopter is prepared for shipment to Bell helicopter. As the first flight test V-22 aircraft is readied for rollout, the various integrated systems are installed. They include prop rotors with uniquely advanced airfoils designed for optimum performance in both hover and cruise flight modes. 
two fuel-efficient Allison turboshaft engines with a high power-to-weight ratio and advanced avionics featuring glass cockpit instrumentation, a heads-up helmet-mounted display, and a digital fly-by-wire flight control system. From the beginning, the dream of tilt-rotor flight has never died. The V-22 Osprey represents the latest success in the persistent path toward achieving the full range of flight. But the potential is not yet fulfilled. Military and civil applications abound, both here in the United States and overseas. Future uses of the tilt rotor are limited only by our imaginations. Today, the V-22 Osprey is adding a new dimension to the dream of flight. And tomorrow is just another dream away. <laughs>